Welcome to Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered with Perry Clark. This program looks at mental health from unique perspectives and shows you how to manage your life by finding the knots that help you and stay away from the ones that could be a disadvantage. Now, here is your host, Perry Clark. Hello, all. Welcome back to Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered. I'm Perry Clark, licensed marriage and family therapist here with you. And I want to remind you, as always, that this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes. It does not constitute working with a mental health professional. Please seek one out in your area. So today we have a returning guest. And uh, if you were listening to it, I unfortunately got those episodes a little out of order when I was up, uploading them up to our um, to the server and so forth. But we've got Dr. Aaron Finley back with us and talking about a um, subject, which we actually you may have heard a little earlier this year about, well, I'll get into that when we actually get into this, but this is in relation to an episode that was also recently done with with Steve Sawyer, licensed social worker and a brain spotting trainer. But back to Dr. Friendly. Aaron Finley is a licensed psychologist in based in Napa, California, who leads her private practice with compassion and the commitment to making differences in the lives of neurodiverse individuals and couples, artists, high performers, and those with a single incident complex with, with single incident complex and or developmental trauma. Uh, beyond in her clinical practice, Dr. Friendly hi- uses a highly attuned, radical, accepted bottom-up approach that is built on attachment theory and neuroscience. She is a certified brain spotting consultant and therapist, and she is also a high HS or an HSP knowledgeable therapist. She has received advanced training in emotional focus therapy for couples, and she is trained in both the classic EMDR and attachment focused EMDR. And we'll just go, I think that's more than a starting place Funny. here. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Perry. I really appreciate being here. Thank you. And so we're going to be talking, as I mentioned, Steve Sawyer, we were talking about uh, his program of Developmental Training uh, in, uh, <laughs> Developmental Trauma Training Institute, which go. we're also here to talk about for with you as well. And I know the usual question is, how did you get here? So I'm interested, how did you get connected with DTTI, which is the abbreviation for Developmental Trauma Institute. Yeah, so I got connected with DTTI before it was even born. So I took um, I took a training from Steve Sawyer um, on uh, working with developmental trauma using brain spotting. Um, at mm-hmm. the time, it was called Going for the Roots. Now it's called Digging Roots. So it's it's evolved a little bit, and. Um, it was the one time that he taught it on Zoom, um, mm-hmm. and it was because it was in the middle of the pandemic. He um, he has since uh, made the determination, and I totally agree with this, to to not teach it on Zoom anymore, um, just because the the material that we're getting into in that training is so um, tender, and the. Um, the the whole key about developmental trauma and trauma in general is aloneness, right? Mm-hmm. And if um, if we're doing a Zoom training, yes, people are more comfortable in their own spaces, but there's also an element of aloneness that's not present when you're in person together. Um, and mm-hmm. so there's just much more opportunity for attunement and for that aloneness to actually be, um, you know, dispelled through the mm-hmm. presence, even in the training. Um, so anyways, I, I took that training from him in 2021 and was like, oh man, this is like really important stuff. I got to dive in and figure this out. And um, so I started up a peer consultation group with a couple of other colleagues and um, and we kept that going and Steve would come in and, and give us a little bit more and give us a little bit more. And, and that was great. And I was like, no, but more, more, more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so after the pandemic started to um, back down a little bit, I, I went up to Bend, Oregon to assist Steve in a, um, a brain spotting phase two training that he was offering that weekend, um, along with another friend of mine, her name is Chris Boxman. And Chris and I, Chris had also been um, part of the, um, the, the 2021 Zoom training as well. 
Um, and she and I both were like, Steve, you need to do more with this <laughs> because people mm -hmm. want this. People need this. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, you know, he needed some support around the things like getting the website started. And we were like, dude, we can help you with that. So um, we kind of pushed him a little bit. <laughs> And, um, and so he scheduled uh, several more trainings um, for the, the Digging Roots model um, the following year. So that was 2022. So, so we started 2023 with a bang. We, we had about close to 40 people in Anchorage, Alaska, of all places, um, mm -hmm. which in March, which was mm -hmm. old for this California girl. Um, <laughs> But um, but we had a good time. Uh, it was a great training, great energy, um, and just kind of launched from there. Um, and then over the summer, um, Steve often um, has, uh, you know, opportunities for reflection over the summer. And so um, he started to think about what if we made it this a bigger thing than just, you know, a single class. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where the Developmental Trauma Training Institute was born. And um, and so I've been with him and, and helping his trainings um, since, since even before it was an idea. Um, and we've really taken off, you know, we're, we're still organizationally getting our mm -hmm. feet on the ground and everything figured out. But it's been so amazing to see all these trainings happening where people are walking away. And I've had, you know, seeing quotes from therapists, even this week who took the training last weekend saying, you know, I tried some of the strategies. I got deeper with my client than I've ever gotten before. They got relief that they've never imagined they could like um, even my own personal practice. Like I had a client yesterday get to an insight that I've been working with this quite a client for quite a long time. And that client got to a place of realization that they never have before in, in a very deep and focused way. And so that was just really neat to witness and, and to have that be a regular part of my practice. It's incredible, you know, and then to help other people do that too, mm -hmm. even more incredible. So that's been it's been great. It's been really very good. good. So even though I know I did, Steve and I talked about it, but I'd love to hear from your spin and pitch on it. What is DTI and what is, what would people who are other therapists that are interested in this be looking for and why or looking at, and why would they want to come to DTI as a training? So, uh, so developmental trauma training Institute really um, is focused on helping clinicians be more effective with mm -hmm. um, their clients who have developmental trauma and clients of all ages. My personal focus is adults, but children too, right? Um, mm -hmm. And elderly and, you know, the whole range of ages. Um, and um, helping, helping those clinicians go in with focus and mm -hmm. strategies for attunement that help their clients shift more effectively and faster. Um, mm -hmm. and, and one of our foundational principles is that we understand that the trauma is stored in the body. Um, and so talking about the trauma, we could do that until we turn blue in the face. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily be shifting the trauma um, because the trauma is stored in the um, what I call the emotional alarm system of the brain, which is like mm -hmm. the, the amygdala and um, the allocortex for any of you brain nerds out there, uh, the limbic system um, and in the brainstem. So those are the areas that really store the, the physiological sensations of the trauma and um, and if we're talking from that prefrontal cortex place, the place of logic and knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. and language, right, we're not going to be actually hitting the mark when it comes to trauma. So so Developmental Trauma Training Institute is is all is focusing on how do we get to the physiological sensations 
of the trauma so that the trauma can be processed. And so part of it is, you know, brain spotting, which is a physiological process that has psychological um, outcomes, um, you know, impacts psychology. Part of it is um, trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga or TCTSY for short, um, mm -hmm. which is about helping people rebuild their relationships with their body and with their felt sense of their body. Um, many times in trauma, people have, um, you know, their agency of, over their bodies um, gets taken away from them, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so much of TCTSY is about um, noticing experiences and also making choices and taking effective action, right? So if I'm doing something uncomfortable, um, I can make an effective choice, like I can take effective action to stop doing the uncomfortable thing, right? Or um, in uh, TCTSY, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm moving my body, I might notice my body in a different way than if I'm standing still, right? And so um, that, uh, that process really helps rebuild the connection to the person's body in a mm -hmm. way that they can experience that sense of choice and that sense of being able to make, you know, effective decisions for themselves um, and reduction of the power dynamic because there's always, you know, power dynamics are a huge part of trauma, but power dynamics are also a huge part of things like, you know, yoga classes. Like if you mm. go to a regular yoga class, you might have the teacher telling you exactly what to do. You might have the te teacher tell you, push, push, push. You might have the teacher um, physically come over and put hands on your body, whether or not you give them permission to correct your posture, right? Like all of that stuff can be incredibly triggering to folks with trauma. Um, and so TCTSY is very much about just exploring the body in a slightly more structured way, but with tons of choice. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really incredible. Um, and then also on that um, physiological level, another aspect that we have is um, heart math. Um, so Steve is one of the faculty members on the Institute of Heart Math. And so um, we're beginning to incorporate heart math more, um, both in terms of seeing how um, the brain spotting works and how the different uh, different interventions work, but also as uh, you know, an intervention tool itself to mm -hmm. help people um, you know, learn to help their bodies um, from the body up rather than from the brain down, right? Um, let's see, what else do we include? Um, the other thing that, that we have included is um, a, a new training called Cut from the Herd, mm -hmm. uh, which is an attachment-focused um, addictions-based model. Um, so the concept of addiction as an attachment disorder, which actually is the title of a book by Philip Flores for anybody who's interested, mm -hmm. um, like it, it has been growing over time mm -hmm. and, um, and understanding that, that addiction can be turning to a substance or a behavior or an activity when the person is needing connection, but they don't have that connection, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so the substance becomes, or the activity or, you know, food or whatever, um, becomes the stand-in um, mm -hmm. in, in the absence of attuned caregivers, because uh, at least that thing is kind of reliable, right? If you're going to have mm -hmm. a beer, you know what you're going to get from the beer, right? Right. <laughs> right? Especially with the way modern products are all standardized. But um, but but even still, you know, there's um, I, there there's so little attention focused on the attachment side of addiction. So much of it is about like you know, chemical um, dependence and thinking about willpower and, you know, behavioral interventions. And this is a totally different angle. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so DTTI as a whole, we focus on the body and we focus on trauma and we focus on attachment. 
Um, and it's a very different way of um, intervening than a more power dynamic based, structured, manualized, not so attuned approach. So as I was listening to talk about that, it made me think about something and I'm going to sort of challenge you on this. Mm, mm -hmm. A lot of everything you just described about what DTI is focusing on is with the body. Yes. But yet when we started talking about the overall subject, we started talking about the frontal lobe and the aspect of understanding lies there. Mm -hmm. And yet the body seems to have a very different understanding, very different uh, experiences that seems to fall short for the understanding that comes in the frontal lobe. So is there something, uh, 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 the aspect of a lot of these things seem to be using a different understanding that is of the body as opposed to the frontal lobe concept of understanding, which seems to also be, if I'm, I'm going to uh, step out on a limb here, seems to be tied into logic, figures, all of those yes. things. Mm -hmm. I, cause I, and I, can, I suspect there are some people who will also probably pick up on this. And what do you kind of say to that and this challenge I throw down to you? I mean, that to me, I don't find that challenging at all. I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's a really well, important question to answer. Mm -hmm. um, our society, American society, I should say, because, you know, mm -hmm. other societies may do it differently. But American society um, has elevated the idea that um, people can think through anything. Mm hmm and the reality is that our bodies and our nervous systems can act faster than our ability to think. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll give you a great example. Have you ever been out on the freeway and found your foot on the brake of your car before your mind realized that the car in front of you was stopping? Mm -hmm. Right? Your body recognized a threat and behaved appropriately faster than your logic could get involved. Mm -hmm. right? And so your body made a choice for you that your logic probably really agreed with if that car in front of you was stopped and you needed to right. stop as well, right? Right. Um, and that's great when you're driving in a car on a freeway and there's a sudden slowdown. That's not so great when you're in a situation and your body senses danger through a process called neuroception. Your body senses danger and reacts to the danger, even though your brain is like, it's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we get this brain body disconnect, this mind body disconnect, where our bodies have reactions that our logic can't override. Um, both because our logic can't go as fast. And also because um, in, in terms of how the, the, brain and the nervous system develop, the brain stem gets the highest priority because that's base, um, you know, that's, that's base survival, right? That's heartbeat and breathing and um, digestion and all of those things that have to go on in the background without you thinking about it. That's, that's like the brain stem. Then we have the emotional alarm system, right? Mm -hmm. Where we um, can assess our surroundings and have a sense of alarm about what's going on. Um, and then we have the logic part. And, and the order in which it develops is the order in which it has priority. So mm -hmm. the logic part is actually the least strong. It's the least fast, right? And so like how many people have had this experience? I know I have, you probably have too, where it's like, I know what I should do and I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I'm not doing it. I know I, like I can explain the steps to 20 other people, but getting myself to do it, I can't do it, right? There's a body piece inside of me that I'm not recognizing in that scenario that if it gets resolved, I might be able to do the thing. Right. So, does that answer your yeah, question? Which, uh, well, yeah, I think it very much answers the, that question. And, it, and I guess when I say challenge you on it, because it we, wasn't exactly probably a question I could have given you any preference beforehand. No, uh, to, 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 but I think it also very much, as you illustrated, is that while this world we live in has been very much built by the frontal lobe, yeah. we're also highly dependent on the 
so we say the most clumsy part of the part of the system to regulate the world well it's not i wouldn't say it's clumsy i would say it's out of sync right this okay. this world that we live in this society that we live in in the united states um is largely built by the frontal lobe our bodies evolved not in you know 2024 in you know the technological revolution mm -hmm. um our bodies evolved you know in planes and as as hunter gatherers and yes there's been some evolution since you know known civilization has begun but in the grand scheme of things that's not very long mm -hmm. right and so it's it's more like our environment is out of sync with what our bodies have adapted to it's it's like if you were to take a fish and only put it half in water right like that's not great mm. um, and i think also this you know side note that's part of what is so hard for people like the demands on us our bodies are not designed for it and so we have to consciously go against social um demands to mm -hmm. carve out times and places for us to do things that take care of ourselves and i'm not talking about going to the spa although going to the spa is lovely mm -hmm. um, i'm talking about having some time just to be in quiet right i'm talking about having some time to move your body i'm talking about having some time to be in nature those are all things that our bodies are designed to experience and to that help our bodies function more optimally but our society has moved more and more away from right and yeah clumsy is probably not the right word it's but it being at the so we say the la the most recent development yeah, for sure it's not the most one might say it's not the most elegant or the most efficient certainly not in the way the current society runs in the united right. states as well as to the aspect of what the brain stem and the amygdala are doing after so many thousands of years of development to have that efficiency and that elegance to it Right, exactly. Because if my nervous system registers, you know, my husband yelling at me the same way that it registers, you know, a bear, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thinking about the man bear conversation, mm -hmm. my husband is quite a teddy bear. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but but it, my nervous system ne isn't necessarily going to evaluate those threats all that differently, but those threats are vastly different in the real world, right? Right. One is my husband being cranky after a hard day at work. The other is like, I might get mauled. Right. Right. Um, so those are very different, um, the very different scenarios. Um, but our nervous systems, you know, are register threat. And so, and, and so our bodies hold on to that threat until we have an opportunity to discharge that trauma energy. And that's the problem. People forget, we forget that we're mammals, right? Yeah, we're still animals. We forget animals. That, that we're critters. Um, mm -hmm. um, and so we have to think about how to take our care of our bodies as mammals in addition to how to take care of our minds as thinking be beings. Mm -hmm. Which is there? Which is one of the fundamental disconnects when we start looking at developmental trauma? That even a young child understands threat, mm -hmm. and that aspect of threat from the barking dog down on the corner versus threat inside the home from the dysregulated parent. Right. Exactly. And, and I wouldn't even say understands, but registers. Like that mm -hmm. child's body is registering that threat, even if that child doesn't understand why there's a threat, the body knows. No matter the idea that their family, which is like always the push that I think in that reasoning mind, that their family, they're not a threat to them. Just, no, that's not the case. Right. The child's body is still going to register threat. And it's going to register threat even before the child has access to words. And so a lot of times, you know, I've, I've heard so many people say, well, you know, that happened before my kid really can remember anything. So they probably don't, you know, I'm sure they don't remember anything from that period because, you know, it was before they were two. And the answer mm -hmm. is, no, it's just the body remembers differently mm -hmm. when it's that young.
right? Mm -hmm. So the body remembers on a body level, um, and then we add the language level. So we might not have the story or the narrative mm -hmm. of it, you know, of something that happened before we were two, but that doesn't mean our bodies don't register it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was um, on my way back from Omaha to the airport, I had this uh, lovely woman who was driving me um, on Lyft, very, very nice lady. And she was, she was telling me about her foster daughter because, you know, I'm a psychologist. People share things um, <laughs> when I'm in a lift. And, um, and, sh and she was, she was telling about her, no, it was her adoptive daughter and um, about this adoptive daughter, how she was really struggling and, um, you know, having, you know, what the mom was describing as behavioral issues and picking at her skin and doing things like that. Um, and then the, I, I asked, you know, what about mom? What happened to mom? And she said, well, you know, mom was uh, addicted to drugs and um, didn't have, uh, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't remember all the details, but, um, but the kid came to the adoptive mom pretty early Mm -hmm. And so the adoptive mom was pretty sure that the kid didn't remember anything. And I said, well, actually, you know, this is one of those things that um, she might not remember a story. She might not remember the the narrative of how it was, but her body remembers. And mm -hmm. so her body needs help as much as her brain. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the mom was like, oh, uh, I'm going to ask her therapist about that. I'm like, awesome. Good luck. Which easily brings, well, which we can easily get into the second half talking much more about the trainings and for therapists, because then there comes that standpoint of how many therapists are actually properly trained to recognize this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the training that has to go so far beyond what we get in school, because the schools yeah. just to give us a theory, just to get us out there versus right. to do this work. A good so enough starting gonna, point. <laughs> exactly. So I think we're going to say that as we go into the second half, which Perfect. I think right now is a great time for us to take a break here on Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered. I'm Perry Clark, licensed marriage and family therapist here with Dr. Aaron Finley, psychologist. We'll be back shortly, so stay tuned, folks. Voice America at Facebook.com forward slash Voice America for juicy updates from your favorite radio shows and podcasts. Our lives and the world around us can get messy and frustrating. Untangle and Grow Counseling's focus is to untangle that mess and make sense of it so you have a good foundation to build and grow from. Visit us on the web at untangleandgrowcounseling.com. Perry Clark offers individual psychotherapy, couples and family therapy, and adolescence therapy from a variety of coping materials and resources. Visit untangleandgrowcounseling.com for more information. You need to live up to your full potential. You've heard that for years, but now there's a channel to help you get there. Introducing the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Our listeners have told us that they want to be motivated, hear about success stories, and positive encouragement around the clock. And we've responded to you. The Voice America Empowerment Channel is the home of the world's top life coaches, entrepreneurs, and success experts. Listen to the Voice America Empowerment Channel. It's here at voiceamericaempowerment.com. Change your world. Change your life. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com You are listening to Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered. If you have a question or comment about our podcast, send an email to pclark at untyingknotspodcast.com. That's pclark at untyingknotspodcast.com. And now, back to the program. Hello, all. Welcome back to Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered. I'm Perry Clark, licensed marriage and family therapist, here with Dr. Aaron Finley, psychologist. And we've been talking, going to continue talking about Developmental Training Institute, or DTI. 
And at, we closed out the second half. We were talking about the aspect of training, our education, and so forth. So can we talk a bit about what DTI trainings are like? Because I know you said one of the big ones was about doing it in person so people aren't necessarily feeling alone and there is a chance for connection. Yeah. So, um, and and I just want to put in a quick edit. It's uh, mm-hmm. Developmental Trauma Training Institute, DTI. Ah. So there's two T's. Um so uh, we have, we're developing a course, uh, a course program, if you will, for therapists who want to really get good at this. Um, <clears throat> we have, of course, brain spotting phase one and phase two for mm-hmm. any um, therapists who are not brain spotting trained. Um, we have also um, a foundations course that um, gives the um, basics of, um, actually, let me double check that real quick. I'm sorry. We might have to restart. But while you're check- checking that, I'd also point out is like, it is helpful to do, to do this by doing brain spotting one and two first. Mm-hmm. So kind of getting trained in brain spotting first, and then you're almost on an offshoot. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've got the. Do, do you want to just restart this segment, the recording? Oh no, let's just keep going. Okay, as it is. <laughs> okay. Um. So. Uh. So yeah. So we've got um. Uh, brain spotting phase one and phase two, which is very important for trauma work in general. Um. Mm-hmm. We also have a foundations course which is the theoretical foundations of developmental trauma. And um, that one is an online course that people can Mm -hmm. take. You don't have to be brain spotting trained for that one yet. Um, Mm -hmm. You can take that, you know, as uh, any, any healing practitioner and and you don't have to be a licensed therapist for it either. Um, So if you want to learn more about, developmental trauma, what it is, how it's different from PTSD and complex trauma, that's a great course to take. Um, Then the next one is the fundamentals. We call that Digging Roots Um, 1.0. That one is the the three-day in-person workshop. You have to have taken the foundations course in order to take the fundamentals course. Um, and, uh, And so the fundamentals course um, is the one that really dives into um, what do we do with this client in front of us who is um, who has developmental trauma, who we need to focus in on not just the issue of the day, but mm-hmm. the um, the the core of the issue down at the root you know we use an analogy of a tree a lot Mm -hmm. um and and it's like we could we could brain spot a leaf but if we brain spot a leaf we're not going to have a very big impact on the whole tree but if we trace the leaf to the branch to the trunk and down into the roots and then we do the brain spotting there Mm -hmm. now we're helping the whole tree heal Right. And, and so in that way, we can heal the, the base of the tree. And then that generalizes, generally speaking, to the rest of the tree. There might be cleanup spots here and there, but it, it generally will um, generalize up into the rest of the tree if we get down to the roots. And the roots are survival mechanisms, survival um fears that we internalize, Um, you know, the fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, uh, the fear of um, humiliation, the fear Mm -hmm. of annihilation. So, and and that's not just like death, although that's certainly one way that annihilation can show up. Um, But it's also fear of like who I am as a person has to be Mm -hmm. erased or is going to be erased by this toxic environment around me. Mm-hmm. So which those, is also gets very much into the issue of, of grief of grief of identity that absolutely goes through when they change jobs or roles of um let's say they stop being married or yeah 
or they become a widower. Right. And when, when that grief taps into something old, then it's trauma, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, the, the grief of, you know, losing a partner or, you know, changing of career or whatever um, might not be traumatic for a person if there isn't an annihilation fear that got um, instilled Mm -hmm. in the person early on. Uh, Might not. I mean, you know, I don't know every person in the world, so. But um, the other thing is um, the experience of marginalization. Mm -hmm. um, is inextricably tied with these internalizations, you know, the fear of, of abandonment, rejection, humiliation, Mm -hmm. annihilation, right? Mm -hmm. And so anybody who has a marginalized experience is going to have some degree of this. And the more intersections of marginality that a person has, uh, the more likely it is that this developmental trauma is going to be present for them. Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead. So these are all things that a therapist who wants to get trained is going to be thinking about going through yes. this training. And we go into that in depth in the in the um, fundamentals training. Pardon me. Um, we go into that in depth in the fundamentals training, not just on a knowledge level, but also um, giving the person, the therapist attending the training, um, tools to start getting into those roots, and then opportunities to practice. So each of our um, fundamentals trainings have um, three demonstrations and three practicums. Um, they're not always like super long practicums, but mm-hmm. um, but we really focus on those practicums on helping people learn the specific thing that they're needing to learn. Um, so there's... Um, so there's so there's digging roots 1.0, which is called the fundamentals, and then there's digging roots 2.0, which is uh, we call that digging deeper, and that goes into other key topics um, around um, understanding what the trauma capsule looks like and is. Um, there are more specifics on things like eating disorders. There's more in there about. Um, uh, understanding the body through yoga, um, sort of more specific topics. That's mm-hmm. all in the 2.0. Um, and, and it's required to have the 1.0 before you can do the 2.0, just like when you're in college. Or, yeah. And I know I've done the 1.0. I need to, yes. I think I, I think I should probably come back in for a, a redoing that of the 1.0 before I do two. So I know well, I'm looking I- at, I'm looking at next year's schedule to see how I can work that. <laughs> Yeah, so the good news is next year we have a couple of each of those on the schedule. Um, and before I go into specific like dates and whatnot, um, there's also another course um, that I want to let folks know about that's a joint project between DTTI and um, another organization called ACCS. Um, that's Jeff Ryan. Um, he's another of the brain spotting trainers. And he and, and Steve jointly developed the high acuity care training. Mm -hmm. Um, And the high acuity care training is really important for anybody working with developmental trauma because so many of our clients who have developmental trauma are so close to being outside of their window of tolerance just by surviving day to day. Mm -hmm. And so trying to dive into any kind of work, any kind of trauma work is just really excruciating for them um, because their system is already on overwhelm all the time. And Mm. so the high acuity care um, or highly activated clients, which is another way that we've been referring to it, um, is really focused on um, helping those clients start to heal in small bites um, and and it starts with an assessment of their window of tolerance and an assessment of um, their ability to sense inside their body, otherwise known Mm. as interoception. Um, And then moving from there to um, building islands of resource using brain spotting 
and then processing um, in, in smaller doses, medium doses, and bigger doses, depending on the person's window of tolerance and ability to sort of hang mm. in there with that processing. So it's a it's a great training, highly recommended, um, very very important as part of a digging roots and um, developmental trauma brain spotters repertoire. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have our um, courses on uh, learning how to do trauma center trauma sensitive yoga. So you can do the um, fundamentals course of that and. Um, and then if you're inspired, you can apply to the trauma center um, to go for a certification. But that's a separate process from DTTI. Right. Well, that's especially for those that are much more interested in yoga and feel they have the flexibility for yoga. <laughs> right. But I know that you can learn to have that flexibility as well. Well, and, and in fact, this isn't your standard yoga class. So like whatever flexibility you have is fine. It's about tuning into the body you have, not about pushing towards some, you know, perhaps unachievable goal. It's mm -hmm. about being where you are and mm -hmm. really tuning into that. Um, and that's the difference between TCTSY and a standard yoga class. Is a standard yoga class is like pushing you in a direction of, you know, increased flexibility or increased stamina or whatever. And trauma center, trauma sensitive yoga is is about like what's happening in your body now, right? That's a very, very different perspective. Very much. And all of this can be found at the Developmental Training Trauma, Developmental training. Trauma training Institute. Yes. Uh, so DTTI.co for anybody who uh, wants to visit us on the internet. Um, DTTI.co. Or if you want to go the long way, you can go Developmental Trauma Training Institute.com. Um, Aaron, I want to thank you for coming on and uh, talking more about that. Unless there's something else you want to add on there. I think we're good for today. Um, I, the only other thing that I'll mention is that we also do occasionally offer intensives. Mm -hmm. um, and we have two different kinds of intensives that we offer. One is a clinician intensive, which is designed, it's a learning experience. Um, so it's really a training. Um, that's not to say that people don't get some healing in that experience, but it's really geared towards training. And that's typically six people over the course of a three-day weekend um, going into a retreat type setting and really um, digging in with either Steve or myself, um, coaching the person who's being the therapist um, to help them improve their brain spotting skills and their attunement. Um, and each person gets half a day as a therapist and half a day as a clinician, as, as the client, because of course we need people to practice mm -hmm. on. Right. right. Um, we also do healing intensives where um, a person who wants to, and this could be a clinician or not, it doesn't have to be a clinician, but if someone is like ready to bust through that, um, that wall or get their splinter out or just like, I've been dealing with this issue forever and I'm finally just ready to have it be done already. Um, a healing intensive can sometimes be a really great choice for that. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, you know, you can reach out to us for that and we can connect you with a clinician in your area. Um, or you can travel to that clinician um, in an area where they're licensed, because, of course, we have to stay mindful of our licenses. Right. But um, but you can travel to the area where that clinician is and um, and have a, you know, a three day or four day experience focused just on your own healing in a deep dive in that way. So that's another thing that we offer. Very nice. And that is ways for people to train and expand their abilities, build their practices as well with this too. Yeah, absolutely. So as you've already mentioned, ways where we can get that in, where people yes. can find the list of trainings. Cool. I'll try to have that in the show notes as well. Perfect. I should say, I will have that in the show notes yep. as well. But uh, Aaron, thank you again. My and, pleasure. Uh, we'll have this up soon and have more people out for that. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Barry. All right. You take care. You too. And we'll have more episodes for you coming out soon, folks. So stay tuned.
thank you for tuning in for Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered. Be sure to join your host, Perry Clark, for another episode on the podcast coming soon on the Voice America Empowerment Channel.